Here we are again. Thank you for joining me. My name is Brian and let's keep on chugging on. All right. So in this video, this will be the last video in the large biology little mini chapter thing. And uh, I want to expound on this area of Colorado. So if you recall uh, a couple videos back, we discussed this area in detail with this potential face dude and the foot on the back side of the rock. So I found on this guy's channel, uh, Colorado forest beings. He has some other tours of uh, nearby uh, Colorado wilderness and uh, this one video I just went through and took a bunch of screenshots of interesting stuff he was pointing out and interesting stuff I noticed as well and um, so this will not this video will not be um, very heavy on the large biology. It'll be more looking at uh, weird uh, features in the rock, but um, I thought it would give some context to stuff like this, and um, maybe uh, I'll try and make the case that many of the places that look biological, once again, may in fact just be um, artificial uh, deceptions, like falsely made to look biological, like this may not be an actual footprint or petrified foot, you know, like, like I discussed before. So, um, I'm going to show some more derpy features in the rock, which lend credence to the argument that this is all derp salad rather than petrified biology. Okay. So let's start with this example. So you've probably seen dolmen or heard of dolmens. This is kind of a relatively new word for me. I only heard this word for the first time, maybe, I don't know, two or three years ago. But, uh, yeah, it's like a flat, um, big slab of rock, usually, typically, uh, on top of two or more stones like this, and many different looks to it, and the explanation is like it's a tomb or whatever. Many date from like five plus thousand years ago, so it's like a, there's all kinds of names for these things like tumulus, cairn, dolmen. These are all very variations on just a, a derpy rock thing that's like nothing, like a nothing burger or a plumbus, like I've discussed before, like a, a purposeless thing that's made to look like it may have had some slightly ambiguous purpose. So in Colorado, I didn't know there are any of these, but th apparently um, we have this guy and just a couple images here. So it's a rock sitting on top of other rocks. Now, natural erosion can leave some uh, rock fragments uh, like stranded or just uh, sitting on top of other rocks looking kind of awkward, uh, but maybe natural, you know? Um, but the, the guy in this video, he's pointing out that there's quite a few of these like um, just a lot of stacked rocks, like too many to be natural in his opinion and also in my opinion. And um, this would be an example of a less blatant um, dolmen than some of these ones. So these are going to be, you know, like this is like if we say that this one right here is 90% uh, architectural in quality then we might say this one is, um, you know, 8% architectural in quality and 92% natural. So, so I think this is just a, um, a more natural looking artificial area. Uh, not just this dolmen, but the, the general area as well. So here's a side, whoops, sorry. Here's a side view of that dolmen right there. And then we're going to get a few different looks at it. So here's a view from below. Uh, there's the dolmen or uh, alleged dolmen. Actually, you know, this is a, a second dolmen. So this first one I showed, this is not the same one as this one. But this is dolmen number two we're considering. And here, here it is from below uh, with a flat, more or less stones, like perched up against these two rocks. Now it could be a natural piece of the layering of the rock, which broke off and then 
hikers just decided to team up and lift it and place it on top of this or whoever just in in recent years or whatever um but he says there's a lot of these things and also uh some of them are pretty huge like way too huge to for um just passers-by to casually prop up and you know just on their little snack break or whatever um so the layering okay so i would say the layering is also artificial um just my opinion i can't say i have a really strong reason in this particular picture for believing that i think we have plenty of other strange areas to paint a um some circumstantial evidence that these may be uh, abnormally artificial layers. Uh, nothing really jumps out at me in this image in particular. It's just my instinct says, like with all the odd contours and lumpy weirdness, and especially the dolmen, yeah, the 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 natural rock, even all this may be uh, an artificial venture as well. So we're going to creep up from the side over here. Here's that dolmen and just get a few different looks. Here we're seeing some of the grooves in the rock. Uh, could be glacial. Perhaps not as well. Okay, so decent view up here. Uh, just working our way around it. And I just took probably too many screenshots and uh, just to get a decent feel for it. So the creases like this. And... I mean, natural, artificial, who knows. Uh, but the arrangement of the stones, I would say, is almost certainly artificial rather than natural. It's just a very awkward perching. This is a view from the other side. We also have, oftentimes, just random rocks stacked in the middle. Um, so, or like shims. Okay, and then this is, this is the top of that dolmen, and then... Uh, this is just the natural area I wanted to get a look at and like the folding and uh, flowiness of the rock. Uh, it's got a similar quality to some of the the morphe or um, wobbly, uh, neither of those are words, uh, the bendy kind of rock that we see on, at uh, archaeological sites and uh, and also other weird rock, like natural rock sites. Uh, so just panning here, and then we see this nice break here. Could be natural or could be artificial. Kind of an L-shaped break here in this big rock. Who knows? But uh, you know, my thinking. I, I'm thinking this is like all deposited there, and um, yeah, not really along the themes of large biology uh, right at the second, but just trying to give that context. And then here's kind of the morphe, bendy, blobby look of the rock with these, uh, what I would say are like 2 or 3% uh, block-like or megalithic-like features. These creases and cracks and uh, divisions of rock, I would say they're this would be a place where they're like just barely phased in as part of the ingredient for formatting this rock outcrop or whatever. And then also we have uh, a bunch of weird contours and grooves. Um, less obnoxious but still reminiscent of uh, like the vehicle tracks patterns and stuff like that. And obviously there's a uh, glaciation is um, a likely expla explanation for an area like this, just like water or ice channels uh, carving their way through the rock. Here we see more of it, like these kind of curving uh, grooves and these grooves as well. And let's see, this, I think I just wanted to give a general view, like the, the lumpiness of the rock and just the subjective feel of it, just for the heck of it. Um, so we have grooves like this, this, and this. Water erosion, likely, um, 
or certainly to a degree, uh, with curves like this, which um, make me raise an eyebrow, but still it's not clear enough uh, in the photo and it's not quite prominent enough of a feature to, uh, to say it's artificial for sure. Um, lots of deep grooves in these rocks, as you see here, and we'll see up close in a minute. Okay, and then here we're seeing more of these curves, and then we're starting to see this channel right here, which has some snow and ice in it. So presumably this is uh, water flow or ice flow related, uh, although which came first, the chicken or the egg? Like the groove, and then the water uh, collected in the groove, or the, you know, obviously there's some feedback loops uh, involved in that, but uh, I wonder if the groove was there first like as a, a, an artificial feature and it's pure speculation, but it's slight things like the, the warped look of the stone right here, just a little awkward. And let's keep moving. And then he takes us to like these three rocks, again, more strange uh, stacking. These are a little more uh, vertical, like this one kind of standing up straightish. Um, so it could just be natural erosion, uh, leaving um, the last bits of resilient rock behind and it just happens to look weird, you know, that's a possibility. And then we also have stuff like this, which I might argue is like 1% megalithic like some of these segmentations or cracks. And then there's a shim, like a lot of these rocks have little rocks underneath, um, either like from a rock stacking perspective or just like a arbitrary uh, weird detail to, to add to embellish the site. And then um, the, we also have these holes uh, to consider. And then also for consideration is these uh, TPs of trees or uh, diagonally or um, leaning trees. Like uh, obviously that can happen naturally when a tree just dies and falls or whatever, or just grows crooked. Uh, but we, we do have an example. There's a better example later I'll show of a, um, like just three trees propped up against each other. And um, he says that you also find like burnt uh, pieces of wood in some of these dolmens and uh, stacked rocks, like uh, just a little piece of burnt branch. So I wonder if that's yet another uh, layer of like deliberate mystery or like a false attempt to paint a, uh, a Bigfoot story. Um, so I think, you know, uh, we could imagine the tree arrangement as a like potential sign of Bigfoot or something like that, Sasquatch. Um, but even that may be just another uh, derpy deception. Uh, like, what if something, uh, some kind of high tech, uh, sporadically kind of uh, breaks branches and uh, stacks trees and puts little burnt pieces of wood everywhere as part of a mystery? <laughs> Like as a like framing Bigfoot when Bigfoot doesn't even exist, I, I think that would be an interesting turn of events if that turned out to be true. Okay, so moving along, um, we've got this guy. This is probably the strongest example in this whole video uh, that you're watching right now. Um, it, this is basically a plumbus. So we're gonna uh, get a. F uh, do a nice little walk around here and get some different angles of this guy. So the general idea is there's a hole right here and this rock which is perched up uh, rather precariously or at least interestingly on this boulder below. It's The hole is pointing um, allegedly like aligning with one of these rocks or whatever and um, I'm saying that's just an, an, an empty uh, alignment or an empty detail like something made to look sig significant uh, strategically, but it's, it's just a, uh, a smoke screen or like a, a dead end rabbit hole. So let's uh, cruise up on this guy, get a better look. 
Uh, there's a lump on the front I'll talk about in a minute, starting to get a better feel for the hole. And then this, there's like a, uh, the top bit uh, protrudes and the sides are a bit lower. So let's keep going. And here we see the hole, not super like precise or anything like that, but looking to me to be artificial, I would say. And then this thing right here is looking like, um, like kind of how Greek statues have like, or any number of ancient statues from whatever culture, they have like a little lumpy penis right here um, on the statue. And this is like a, uh, like a 7% or like 15% phallic feature. And the placement of it is, uh, or the position of it is um, telling as well. So oh, talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but just keep an eye on this random little lump there. And then here we see the alignment. Okay, it aligns with that, but what I'm saying is like, who cares? Like they, they make all these alignments to make you study alignments, which don't matter. <laughs> like, it's just like, it aligns with the rock. Uh, you know, so what? Um, but okay, so great view here from the side. We get a we see this very awkward uh, shape to it. Uh, here's the, it's almost like a baby crib, you know? Uh, and here's the headboard. And then here's the sides of it. Um, so just a very strange shape. And good look at it there. Awkward protrusion right there. The whole, so definitely looking like an artificial rock here. And um, so, if, if this is like a plumbus, basically, just a nothing burger, then I think it lends some uh, circumstantial evidence or possible corroborating uh, explanation to the, the biological stuff nearby, like the giant's toes and the, uh, um, or the potentially biological stuff and the gargoyle dude and the, the footprint thing. So what I'm saying is if we have stuff like this in the area, just like obvious nonsense, then I think when we see the biological stuff, we might suspect that that's nonsense as well. Suspect, not assert. Um, I mean, it's a fairly strong suspicion uh, for me at this point. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so let's keep scrolling around this guy. So yeah, the idea that these, the knobs on blocks, megalithic blocks, and like this, and this hole, and the shape of it, even these are all um, empty features or uh, nearly sensical, but ultimately nonsensical features. So uh, a plumbus again is the features are suggestive, but ultimately purposeless and somewhat arbitrary. So let's go back. This is a suggestive little wiener on the front. Uh, this is a suggestive artificial hole, but not super blatantly artificial, like, like a drill hole or anything. This could be perceived to be a natural shape, like the baby crib shape I was talking about or whatever. Um, but it's, it is suggestive of something artificial. So it's in that weird middle space of uh, almost this, almost that, but not quite either. Uh, okay, and then so just one more slide here. Reminder, uh, plenty of c deliberately confusing details in endless varieties, which never served a legitimate purpose. So like this area in uh, near India, uh, there's all these random holes. And I don't think you can look at this like the weird uh, wa uh, wonky angles and weird cuts. I don't think you can look at this and say it was ever functional um, or part of a, a legitimate building. Uh, so I think it's just arbitrary patterns that were imposed on a stone or that the stone was molded into. Um, so this thing is basically just a dick butt <laughs> and it even has a dick <laughs> and it even has a butt as we'll see in a minute. There's a butt crack on the back. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you're familiar with this meme, it's, it's basically that. Totally awesome. So here's base same idea as like the little nub on the front. Like a dick butt is a great example of a uh, 
cartoon version of a, a plumbus. It's got like, uh, it's feature salad basically. It's just dicks and butts everywhere. And he's probably got another set of tits somewhere. Uh, if you look carefully, you know, um, like random, uh, con uh, combining of features, not, but not completely random. So this is basically a plumbus or a dick butt, like a, a feature salad derp nothing show. It's a doodle, um, but it's a particular kind of doodle, which, uh, discombobulates and also lends itself to multiple different possible explanations. So you, I think you could look at this and say, well, it might be natural. I can certainly look at that, look at it and say that. Uh, and then you could also look at it and say it's like a sundial. You could look at it and say it's a, you know, a, any number of things like a, crap, I don't know, um, a ancient megalithic uh, piece that's eroded or something like that. So it's supercharged for mystery. Um, the, the more possible explanations you can pack into something's design, uh, interpretations, uh, the more m mysterious it is in its effect. So, uh, okay, and one more thing I wanted to say on that, uh, on this example in India, as it pertains to this example in Colorado, is that this place in Colorado is off the beaten path, more or less, like these, uh, at least what he says in the video, he says to get to these places, you have to go off the trail, and also I remember in this video, the, um, uh, what's his name, Praveen was saying, uh, that this is, like, off trail, like, or, um, you have to go out a ways to see this, it's like, there's an effort barrier to obtain this information, or an investment um, invitation or requirement. So uh, you have to climb all the way up to uh, the top of this place where he took this picture from to see this and or hike out into kind of the, the boondocks to get a, an eyeful of this. Um, so the idea is, um, yeah, that uh, putting things just out of reach or in a uh, non-obvious location adds to the mystery. That's yet another ingredient in the mystery, the magical mystery formula that uh, is so intoxicating. Um, so if you want to make something even more mysterious and uh, bedazzling and ultimately bewildering, uh, you would bury it or you would uh, put it somewhere where no one will ever see it or almost no one will ever see it, or they'll almost never see it, you know, like make it rare and make it hard to find. Uh, that's part of the formula for creating a, a, a big wow, a big uh, a strange mystery thing. Okay, so here we get a good look at the wiener thing. It kind of looks like a thumb. Uh, could be natural, certainly, like looks like there's some water running down here, maybe the water just runs down the side and carves a groove, but I think there's some def definite uh, premeditated aspect to this uh, little nub here. Here we get a better look at it, it's kind of jutting out there, and I think the next image is, yeah, so this is a herm, once again, a, uh, a word for uh, a, this derpy type of statue or figurine that occurs in multiple cultures where they just have random little nubs for arms and like a square body and uh, and then usually some type of phallus. I'm saying this is all uh, basically just an, a mostly arbitrary assortment of features or details um, are somewhat arbitrary. It, it, it's not so arbitrary that it's random but uh, it's arbitrary enough to both confuse and to have a, a certain effect on the beholder, you know, to wow the beholder and uh, to induce a certain relationship to uh, the beholder's past or what they feel like their relationship is, like their place in the universe. Like, um, that's getting a little bit more into it, but uh, yeah, the, the 
random cock and then the uh, this hole or dent this dent right here the indentation is not to be ignored in my opinion this is such a common thing and it's uh, so awkward and uh, so ubiquitous it occurs in megalithic blocks it occurs in statues and just random spots and I'm saying it's rather than being in a damage pattern it's yet another derp salad feature just a derpy um, detail uh, thrown into the mix so uh, look at this little wiener thing and then consider that in relation to this little wiener thing and it's as if this whole plumbus block here in Colorado is um, like 10% uh, Herm in its design so uh, the, the, again the idea of a hodgepodge or f uh, a feature salad um, so this thing has aspects of megalithic blocks, it has aspects of uh, sculpture now, uh, aspects of a sundial, um, almost like a chair or something like that. And then as we move around it, we'll see the side here, and uh, not much to see here. And then on the back side, there's a crack there, which is reminiscent of a butt. <laughs> I think that could potentially be uh like uh, the the intent behind it like as a kind of joke or uh, a jest or sense of humor type of thing and then this nice flat um surface here so uh i would say the the joinery here this crack and this crack is um slightly megalithic in its appearance and again so this this whole object considered as a whole has aspects of megalith has aspects of natural rock it has characteristics of uh, sculpture with that nub on the front and then uh, yeah so I think I explained that well enough okay um, just a different look here at the seam and these are the rocks up behind it where the the you can see the hole or you can see th these rocks through the hole and not a whole lot to point out here some interesting uh, look to it but nothing in particular just giving you a view for it and then up behind that up on top of that uh, outcrop or hill you know up behind these rocks we have uh, this very large boulder perched pretty precariously on this little platform right here and the boulders weird the platforms weird uh, so first of all we have these very um, deep indentations or grooves here and we will work our way around it to see the grooves. We also see this lip here, this little anomaly in the lip or a variation. We'll get a few different looks at that. So it's a strange little, again, the idea of just an arbitrary square hole as a confusion protocol or to spice things up, you know, or just an, an arbitrary, um, uh, what do you call it, ridge or like almost like a brow ridge or something. So one could look at this and uh, even say it's like try to say it looks biological in origin and um, you know much less so than some other places but uh, and of course could be con construed as natural as well. I just think uh, similar to these grooves that all these features are arbitrary um, derp salad. Okay so we're gonna keep moving pretty good look at this nub here again somewhat reminiscent of the knobs on the blocks in Peru so if the Colorado landscape has arbitrary knobs and holes and so do megalithic blocks then what does that tell you it tells you that the landscape quite likely is uh, done by the same hand as the megalithic uh, builders or uh, yeah okay so let's keep working our way around and pretty good look at this nub here or this uh, protrusion of uh, rocky ridge somewhat reminiscent of some of the windy or knobby stone in uh, Fontainebleau a couple videos back some of the rocks there and uh, I think yeah staring up here we get a really good feel for the depth of these grooves you know potentially water erosion or whatever I mean, certainly there's at least some water erosion occurring, um, but maybe it looked 
like this. Uh, it was crafted like this uh, before the water erosion started ha started happening. Okay, so here's a view like head on from like we were just looking from this angle over here. Now we're about 90 degrees off, and we see this weird like fin feature, or uh, just an awkward little portion of it right here, and we see more of the nubuly wobbly rock at the base, and let's keep working our way around. Good look at this weird fin here, and just the general weird look of it, strange shape. And here's that fin thing from another angle, nice smooth contour there, kind of weird. Um, more deep grooves. And here we're starting to see these uh, wavy uh, modulations or variations in the stone below it. Right here we get a decent look and this lip here and it's perched. There's not a lot of contact. I don't think we get a good look from this image, but some of these rocks, there's like barely any contact from the, the massive rock to the stone. So here's a rock that's like obviously not stacked by a hiker, you know, or an artist. This is just naturally like this and or made to look like it's naturally like this when really it's artificial. Okay, so just a couple looks at the lip here. There. Keep moving. Nice groove here. Not not blatant enough to compare it to the uh, vehicle tracks, certainly. And we obviously see similar features on the surrounding rocks. Um, but it's uh, it's a it's a small percentage similar. So we might say this is twenty five percent like like uh, sorry brain fart. About 25% similar to the vehicle tracks phenomenon, potentially. Here we get a good look at these wavy uh, patterns under it. And it's looking similar here to some of the wavy patterns. I should have pulled up an image, but some of these flowy, wavy rock patterns in Fontaine Blue that we saw. And then here in this image, we get a look at these holes, especially this one and this image as well. So just kind of a random hole here. And that's very similar to some architectural stuff we see around the world. And one look from afar, there we go. Some of these holes look kind of natural like this right here. You know what I mean? But this one, I don't know, it could just be the angle, the lighting, but it, it looks a little more abrupt. Okay. And then here's another boulder next to it, and we're going to check out this area over here with this uh, wavy rock here, and also this flat surface here, which looks like it may have broken off of this flat surface. So let's work our way around and see, like right here, this odd um, flatness here, and then the boulders in between. Okay. Let's uh, creep up on that. And this, I don't know, it's looking like different sizes for these surfaces. So I don't know if these were like attached like to the same, like if these are part of the same spot, you know, like two halves of a, a rock. Cause this, this side is obviously smaller than this flat side. Uh, maybe there's a good explanation for that. Here, this groove looking pretty, uh, Pretty deep and blatant, possible knob here, or reminiscent of a knob. And let's get up close. And some some of these, uh, oh, my vocab is failing me. Um, uh, wobble, wobbly, or wavy, or knobby, or lumpy. I guess lumpy is the best word. Some of these lumpy stones. Uh, I'm going to compare in a minute to some architectural spots. And then here's the stones like, I don't know. So back up a minute. Uh, oops, sorry. So these stones right here, they're striking me as like a small percent megalithic, like the kind of stacked 
notice the stacked aspect of it. Um, of course, it could be natural rock layers, but uh, it's just looking like a, it's a certain percentage uh, of its DNA, so to speak, is megalith or, or block wall, a megalithic block wall, like 5% or so. You know, uh, it's very speculative, I agree, but it's... And then again, we have little rocks like this, just kind of randomly just kind of shoved in there often with these stacked rocks. Okay, so let's move on. This example, we've got some curves, interesting uh, warped looking rock here. Could be glacial in nature, or certainly, or whatever, volcanic. Uh, we don't get the best feel for it in a still image, but it's pretty like windy and uh, goofy, I would say. And then I want to compare this to a spot in New Mexico. Also these cavities right here, potentially related. Uh, so let's go to Bandelier National Monument in New Mexico, where we have all kinds of derpy patterns in the rock. So this is not too far from Colorado, but we have these flowy patterns like, okay, maybe this is natural, you know, and okay, looking a little weirder, like quasi artificial here, yeah, um, kind of steps here. Like this one's pretty weird. And let me go back to the Colorado example. So kind of similar, just wavy, winding. Um, less so, certainly, but still similar. And then here in New Mexico, we've got, okay, now now it's getting into weird territory. Like this, is this functional? Uh, okay, maybe, what about this? Like one, two, three, four, five, like six kind of, just like, what is this, stairs? and how they do this, you know? So like, does that make sense as stairs? No, it's it's stair-like, it's stair-esque. It um, has attributes and qualities of stairs, but it's a, uh, a tweaking of that concept, a, uh, a, uh, a warping of that notion and a blending of feature types. Uh, like an extrapolation or a uh, uh, artist's interpretation of steps. So here's a, yet another variation of the types of steps. This one makes more sense, although it's like it doesn't make sense as like worn footpaths. I think it makes sense as like deliberately carved stairs, but not like uh, just um, something that naturally occurred from people walking. Uh, okay, and then we get a better view or a better look at weirdness uh, in these next few images. Just the random holes and stuff, these silly holes and the awkward shapes of the rock, the weird angles, quasi artificial, like quasi architectural, um, very derpy, and um, in that weird middle space, like I talk about, kind of natural, kind of artificial. Uh, so the idea is that this site is basically, and more grooves here, the site is basically similar to Colorado. It's just that Colorado is slightly more natural looking. And then sites like this are left as kind of truth drops or, um, you know, clues or whatever. So, uh, this is the last image I have of this Bandelier National Monument in New Mexico. And we see yet another variation on the weird uh, patterns that occur in the stone here. Like this kind of uh, almost like alligator skin or um, like a very coarse, weird, uh, scaly texture. And some might say this is like, like petrified uh, skin or something like that. some type of biological tissue or something but given given the weirdness of all the other stuff I think it's just nonsense so this is like a more natural looking nonsense almost like I could see this being natural if viewed in isolation from the rest of the site like uh, ignoring the rest of the site I could say yeah this might be natural but this is just a, a more natural uh, uh, variation on the the derpiness 
So let's go back and look at these. So this is like a slightly less blatant version of the same thing we were just seeing in New Mexico, in my opinion, rather than glaciation. Just an opinion. What do you think? I mean, especially with... If it were this example on its own, I would have a hard time making that case. But let's go back to that plumbus rock. And can you really look at that uh, plumbus perched up on that hill there we are looking at a few minutes ago? And can you honestly say that there's no derpy manipulation going on? And it'll take me a minute to get back to that image, but bear with me. So yeah, this plumbus guy, like... Can you really look at this thing and uh, and say there's no strange manipulation going on with the rock? Now, most people, or a lot of people will say the manipulation is um, like advanced cultures or something like that, like lost ancient advanced cultures like the Atlanteans or whoever, you know? Um, but I don't think this is legit cultural work. This is not something you do when you have high knowledge. It just isn't. Unless you're like amusing yourself for shits and giggles. When you have the ability to work with stone at this level, you don't make stupid alignments like this. And that, that's the formula. Just doing things you wouldn't do with technology that's beyond our means. Or part of the formula anyway. anyway. So I gotta... Do some rapid scrolling here to get back to the spot we were just at. So twiddle your thumbs for a minute. And here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, almost there. So derpy derp derp. Okay, so back here to Colorado. And same general area. We have, it's kind of subtle, but these this line right here, kind of a parallel line there, and then this line here, like at a right angle to it, could be nothing. Um, certainly could be natural. Just caught my eye, so I thought I'd point it out. Um, and then why did I... Okay, so I guess right now I would like to talk about uh, this lip and this hole again in the context of Roman ruins. So keep this hole in mind and this uh, strange warped lip and then... Uh, take a look at like this portion of this wall this is the walls of terraco in spain and like the idea is it's just warped rock like lumpy warped rock uh comprising the uh alleged blocks and uh like on this corner you see it's like rocks stuffed in there or possible mortar or possible just variations within the same rock like a very weird look to it like over on this end of the block it looks like uh one block uh middle row and then like another row of blocks but like over here it looks like one continuous piece um so strange derpiness going on perhaps uh, and i would argue it's very similar to what's being used to make this pattern and this this hole here so, um, yeah, and then same city, well, uh, Tarragona, Spain, uh, Portico of Terraco or Tarragona. We have these, the grooves and the, the odd ridges and warpy, lumpy manipulations of stone, which some of which is presumably natural, but I'm, I'm going to go with the whole thing. It's just a, a derp salad. And then we have blocks like this which don't make much sense like the center portion of the block is off center and like the margin here is not consistent with the margin there and uh it's like partly made of brick apparently so uh like the margins of these uh, uh raised center portions on the blocks are so inconsistent from block to block uh it's just, it's like a again a derp salad We've got weird holes like this like this, like this, just random holes and grooves and lumpy wobulations of stone everywhere. So even stuff like this, like this right here, is basically similar to the the lip in uh, in Colorado. Uh, okay, so now we are back to Colorado, looking at yet another 
aesthetic to the stone here looking kind of melty or melted as the, the presenter here pointed out. And I noticed this, uh, I mean, it's just periodelia, I guess, or it's seeing patterns in randomness, but it kind of looks like a stingray <laughs> or something right here. Could just be uh, the natural volcanic flow if this is a natural rock. But I rather suspect uh, this whole rocky area is um, more of the same strangeness. Uh, okay, so this block is very interesting. Uh, this one up here, it's, you can't tell from this image, but it's got a very small point of contact. Like it's pretty preca precariously perched, or it looks like it is. And it's got the, the deep grooves on the side for one. And then uh, this feature on the front, we're going to zoom in a, a bit. And so this is kind of nothing, but I would say it's uh, like a subtle but important detail. This uh, partial squarish nub here, or it protrudes slightly. So I would say this is similar to this right here on the gargoyle thing in a nearby spot in Colorado. So uh, get a better view in the next image. This right here, it's just like a nothing, um, nothing burger or a, a juicy detail which isn't quite anything. You know what I mean? It's a, a quasi feature. So it's, it almost looks like any number of things, but it's not quite anything. Uh, so back to this. This is similar to that, I think. Just the same strategy, but a different variation on it. And then uh, back to the plumbus block. This uh, is yet another variation on that type of strategy. Just like a, a nice weird little protrusion kind of centered on the stone here. Um, so I think we're seeing three instances of, or three variations on the same general strategy. One, and then the next image, uh, two, and then similar feature on that plumbus block, three, just strange subtle protrusions which might be natural or might be artificial. Okay, so back to this rock and then we're going to work our way around and see this Pretty large cavity there. Uh, good look at it there. Uh, view from the side and this deep hole or cavity I would suspect while it looks natural I would suspect it's um, artificial and then he mentions we don't get a good look at it but he mentions that this it looks like kind of like a bowl on top like kind of like carved out a little bit or caved in and uh, unfortunately we can't uh, validate that but that would be an interesting feature um, and one could imagine how we might interpret this as like some kind of jawbone or something like that, but to the contrary, I would say uh, it's more likely to just be a nothing show or nothing burger, derp salad. And this is a view from the other side of it. Uh, here's the, the deep grooves and see this underneath portion that it's sitting on top of. Uh, there's no contact here, but it does have like one point of contact somewhere over here. Um, this is looking somewhat uh, like 10 or 15 percent megalithic to me, like a megalithic wall, like one of those Roman walls we were looking at a minute ago. So like especially this one down here, it's kind of like a bendy rock with a some some angularity to it, like some uh, hint of a an angular joining or it's like a suggestive um, just slight uh, angularness to it and it certainly could be natural layers but I think this is made to look you know 85% natural 15% artificial you know give or take however many percent but just subjectively it gives me the willies or makes me raise an eyebrow so just working our way around here, taking a little tour, and you see it's kind of at an angle here, perched pretty uh, precariously, or seemingly so. And uh, yeah, and then we'll take a look at this weird thing underneath, this feature on the f bottom face of it. So just getting a general look here, and it's like, almost looks like a, like a blob, like a 
multi-legged blob, like a flattened octopus or something like that, as we'll see. So, yeah, so it's got like these little, uh, it's kind of hard to describe, but kind of looks like gack, like the putty toy, or like a splat, splattered uh, bit of something. I don't know how to describe its shape, but like a little Christmas tree or a leaf or something like that. Uh, but there we get a good look at it. It could be just natural sloughing or uh, cracking away of the stone, just like scra uh, cracking and uh, sh shaving off or falling off just due to weathering and water and whatever else. And it just has a weird look to it. So I thought I would point it out that it may be yet another derpy feature. And this is, again, one of those things that could potentially look like a biological feature, but I doubt that it is. So, interesting shapes here. One last look at it there. And, see a nice uh, tip of it there, kind of pointy. Okay, whatever. Okay, one last look, I guess. Uh, kind of lumpy. And what's up next? Uh, so these cliff sides here. So the video guy here, he mentions that up here in this area, this rock is looking natural, whereas a lot of the surrounding area looks heavily manipulated and stacked stones and whatnot. Uh, I would actually beg to differ I'm gonna go and say that this area is artificial as well. Um, again, just subjectively striking me as like kind of like the layer cake kind of pancake look to it, and some of the creases, just like the placement of some of these features, is looking slightly megalithic to me. Not super blatant at all, but just just enough, you know. To, to the point where it's like in my on my radar so I would say it looks I don't know 4% megalithic 96% natural so I mean is what it is okay here's a, yet another rock this one's stacked more vertically or uh, you know a little more precariously uh, another one so there's a whole bunch of these rocks that are stacked like this that's just the basic point of it, or point with, that I'm trying to make with those images. And then here's one of those uh, s s tree teepees, where the trees are, or the dead trees are stacked against each other. And again, could just be hikers doing it. Here we get a good look at it. Uh, I half suspect that it's like an attempt to frame a Bigfoot that doesn't exist <laughs> as part of the ongoing generation of false rabbit holes and mysteries that aren't real uh that could be you know uh i mean i obviously don't think the the protocol or the algorithm as i'm calling it or whatever you want to call it i don't think it's limited to rocks obviously it's it's doing um it's doing its dirty work or its magic in multiple domains uh human affairs uh i think probably who knows vegetation as well uh, uh, just rearranging sh stuff on multiple levels in multiple domains so whatever's and then uh, just a general look at the landscape here that's all I really want to show just kind of the melty look subjective feel of it natural artificial up for debate again here we see some of the grooves, the deep grooves, um, possibly forming here, or possible. This could be mimicry as well. Obviously, um, see these kind of fingers of rock, which are little layers of the natural bedrock, which have broken off and eroded, presumably, um, if that's what's really going on. Um, even like the the entire mountain, I would question as natural, but. I, I obviously can't prove it, so let's just move on. Uh, okay, so up on that area, 
or that uh, this general area we have this strange block with this weird low shape to it so we'll and even this one kind of having some slight warpiness to it um, possible strange gashes there or hints hints of uh, weird uh, patterns and one one more angle here on this guy the, the weird little nubs at the end of it and then similar stuff on the surrounding rocks so whatever and then we will end with this uh, this is just obviously the trail these he mentions are uh, indications of obvious uh, modern breakage of the stone like this is like modern repair of a trail and I would tend to agree and then we see it in context of the surrounding stone and presumably like this was already here and then these were like placed here by hand to make the trail and then some of them were altered uh, it wouldn't surprise me if even this stuff is like uh, just um, like uh, deceptive like deceptively made to look modern <laughs> um, my best guess is that yeah this is modern work these drill hole things um, I just I don't know I just wanted to show it in context of the surrounding Rockies okay so that is it for this video not a whole lot of content uh, comments on biology uh, but or large petrified critters Hopefully, uh, this just gives some context to that whole field and hopefully ref reframes things a little bit for you. All right, so next up, I think we have stone walls and geoglyphs and stuff. So we will cover that then. All right, see you later.